All right. Hello, moms. How are you? It is late. I'm doing a live stream at 10 p.m. Usually I'm in bed by now, but um, I really wanted to, to do this. So um, today's topic is um, you are the expert in your own life, which includes your own relationships. Okay. Um, so what does that mean? A lot of moms who start off in family court, they are they are positioned um, inadvertently positioned as though they are no longer the experts in their own life. Suddenly now um, the court is managing their lives, their careers, their relationships, where they live, how they parent. Um, the court is managing their, their health, you know, mental health, God knows what, you know, courts suddenly really seem to care about your mental health and who's living with you. Do you have a sick parent? I mean, just your whole life basically. So um, I'm here to say, you are still the expert in your own life and your own relationship. Now, the, the relationship I am more specifically referring to is, drum roll, doo -doo 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 -doo, the relationship with your ex and the relationship with your attorney and the relationship with your ex's attorney and your relationship with all the haters in your case, the judge, the evaluator, the parenting coordinator, the, the GAL, who knows, all these people. You are in charge of that relationship. You are the expert in how you function in those relationships. You get to de you get to determine um, what kind of relationships you have with these people. Okay, so we're going to predominantly talk about your relationship with your ex because you had children with that person, you've lived with that person, you married that person. Um, so, yeah. oh my gosh, my screen. I'm sorry. Hang on one second having some issues. Um, okay, so who am I? <laughs> I'm Monica Shimonik, for those who don't know me, and I create healing and empowerment plans for the mama bear in family court. And I've been doing it for about three and a half years now, and I love it. This is my calling. Um, my son was taken from me 10 years ago in the family court. My son turns 18 this weekend. Did I say 18? He turns 13 this weekend. I may have said 13. He turns 13 this weekend and I'm not going to see him for like another 10 days. So it's very difficult. So the next time I see him, he's going to be another year older, basically. So yeah, 10 years and still going. I'm in the appeals court as we speak. Um, I have a copy of my appellate brief right here. And after I argued my brief, a little side note here, after I argued with my brief, I got a letter from the court saying that the court destroyed my exhibits for that appeal. So who I, who knows what's going to happen. But anyway, I'm that the point is I'm fighting. So we're going to talk about your ex. Okay, your favorite topic, right? We're going to talk about, um, you know, uh, there, there are three ways you can manage your ex. Okay, we're going to talk about there, there's two of them that you're probably familiar with. And I'm going to introduce a third that you might find to be useful okay so um when it comes to abuse and hatred from your ex your goal isn't to be right your goal isn't to make them see your side okay your goal uh, hang on one second my settings are a little funky here i apologize okay here we go Oh, my screen is getting so much prettier. prettier. Okay, perfect. So again, I, I'm going to start over. Your goal isn't to make them see your side. Your goal isn't to, to be right. Your goal isn't to manage their hatred towards you. Okay, that's not your job. You're not their mother. Um, your job isn't to help them see things differently. That is not your job. Okay. Um, that said, your, your, what you want to do your ultimate goal, and this is what the universe wants for you, because the universe is always out for your greatest good. The universe is always trying to infuse lightness into your life. It's it's really us that decides whether or not we're going to allow that or block it. Okay, so it's not like it's not like we have to go and chase peace and chase healing and chase um, you know things that make us feel good, like gratitude and and forgiveness, and you know. We don't have to go and look for those things. Those are naturally going to be flowing into our lives, and it's up to us to either accept it or turn it away. So um, as I was saying, the um, your goal is to neutralize their hate. Okay? Neutralize, neutralize, neutralize. Okay? So um, 
I'm going to give you a little example. Okay. So this little person in the middle is you. That's you. Aren't you so cute? Hang on, let me see if I can do this. So I am awful at this. I'm so glad I didn't become a teacher. Hang on. Oh. I'm going to have to like use my mouth. Hang on. Let me see if I can. Okay. I'll talk behind the board. <laughs> or maybe I'll do it this way. So, okay. Your job is to neutralize the hate. Okay. So this is you. Okay. And this is the hate from the judge. Okay. It's going to attack you in some format, you know, probably like give you a lot of headaches or stomach aches or something like that. Um, or just make you feel bad about yourself, right? I mean, this, they're like professional, they're professional assholes. So um, your ex's attorney is going to come at you here, and that's probably going to like, you know, make you have like breathing problems or whatever. And I'm, I'm just, I'm just really talking about like physical symptoms, but in reality, like they're just throwing hate bombs at you and it's just going to mess up your day. Okay. You might not necessarily feel it in a certain body area. Um, your ex is going to come at you. Okay. And then like you get like a bad um, custody evaluation and all these like people are just so nasty. And like, who else do we have? Um, I don't know. You talk to a legislator about reforming the system and they say, well, why don't you just co-parent? You know, they say something ignorant so that, you know, you have all this like hate coming at you and these people that are, really harming your sense of self and your 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 they're interfering with your ability to heal from having your your kids taken from you you know and all the abuse that came along with it so one way you're going to manage this this is i'm going to talk about the two ways the two ways that most people are, are uh, familiar with with managing this one thing you can do is placate the abuser so that would be you, you know this is this is like negotiating with um, the, the nasty attorney, um, trying to twist your life around. I'm just going to set this down. Placate. We're going to talk about that. So, you're, you know, you, you might want to like twist your life around to like make the other side's attorney like be nicer to you. You know, you might like do things that you don't normally have to do, like document stuff that you don't really have to document and like just doing things like jumping through hoops to make the other attorney not abuse you as much okay so like you're you're doing things to prevent someone else from from abusing you you know you're you're kind of like almost like you're being married to an abuser you know you're walking on eggshells okay you might be trying to um do things to make the evaluator happy like oh gosh the evaluator said that um that my alcoholic brother is a bad influence so let me let me show the evaluator that i'm not hanging out with my brother anymore you know things like that like um, the evaluator didn't like um, that I work 30 miles from home, so let me see if my job will transfer me. So you, you end up doing things, you end up placating the hate, okay, by trying to work with them, and especially a lot of you will placate your abuser. You'll, you'll try to um, enmesh yourself into their hate to try to, to try to dissolve their hate, you know, and this is what you probably did when you were married, who knows. Um, and it's not, it's not intentional. Like this is, th this is your way of, this is like, um, a symptom. This is a form of symptom management. You're, you're just in survival mode and you're just trying to manage the symptoms, which you don't like being attacked. So you're, you ch you're choosing to placate people to, to manage the symptoms, not because you necessarily agree with them. So, so that's the first option. The second option is to become ag aggressive in return. Okay. That's a, another way that you may manage these people. Um, so those are like almost like two extremes, right? Doesn't that seem like those are the opposite? Like you either are placating them or you're being aggressive. They're really not opposites. Um, they're two extremes, but um, both of those extremes encompass the same degree of what I like to call attachment. Um, it, it, symbolizes, it symbolizes attachment enveloping yourself in their energy whether it's to placate them or to be aggressive in return is um is is embodying attachment energy which can be toxic so um, i'm not really going to get into like what attachment is it's a pretty it's a pretty deep concept it's something you really have to like look into so um you know, you're if you if you become aggressive, your anger is attached to their hatred, and then or you become like malleable and and negotiable, 
because you're attached to their hatred, okay? Um, so what is not really romanticized in our culture is a third option. And that is, um, and that is neutralizing hatred. Okay, you're, you're not going to see this in like sitcoms and reality shows and you're not going to see this in popular culture. You're definitely not going to see this in the family court system. You're not really going to see it on social media, even if you go into divorce support groups like, you know, moms who are fighting for custody or whatever, you know, you're not really going to see that, that style of symptom management in those sorts of groups. It's either like, well, try to work with them or, um, or just get aggressive. You know, the other, the other population that will not embrace um, the third option, which is to neutralize, is the divorce industry itself. Okay, you know this. I cannot tell you how many co-parenting therapy sessions I sat through where the co-parenting therapist, like my ex would be sitting there abusing me and I'd be like, I mean, this is like long before I learned that I didn't have to put up with that stuff. But, you know, my ex would be like abusing me and, and I would be like, I want to leave. Like, this is really bad for me. <laughs> uh, you know, this, this energy and this atmosphere is, is harmful to me. And the therapist wanted me to try to understand why my ex felt the way he did and like why I was being abused. And basically it's like, well, tell, you know, why do you suppose you don't like that he's taking your child away? Like, you know, like they were, they would try to like play therapist when you have a narcissist and that does not work. You cannot, you can't heal a narcissist. They, they don't respond to therapy. Okay. So it doesn't work. <laughs> so the divorce industry does not embrace either of those things. And, you know, I mean, they probably embrace the aggressive aspect of it, but hang on one second. I dropped my board. <laughs> I'm such a hot mess today. So, okay. So where was I? Um, so yeah. So here's another option for you. Okay. We're going to erase these daggers here, these hate daggers. Okay. Let's just get these out of the way. I don't know how teachers do this all day long. Like I would just, no, just, no. All right, so we're gonna draw a little bubble around you, okay? So this is like your being, your lightness of being. Like this is you and then this is like the protective boundary bubble um, that you are that you are allowing yourself to have, okay? It's not something you have to build and like create and work hard for. The universe is always out for your greatest good. The universe wants you to embrace a lightness of being. And so that's gonna be your natural way to go. You just have to allow that and know how to, to um, preserve that and not let it be broken down by your, by your past and your patterns, your thought patterns. So this is what happens to the, to the hate. Now the daggers are still gonna come. Okay, these people are not going to change because that's the thing. These people are not going to change. Okay, you're still going to get all that nasty stuff. Okay, so what a lot of you are doing, you're not, you're not even thinking about a bubble. What you're doing is you're trying to operate inside these daggers to try to fix things. You can't do that. <laughs> you can't work with narcissists. The entire divorce industry is narcissistic at its, at its base, at its, at its like, um, you know, at its foundation is a narcissistic organization. It can only thrive when there are narcissists at play. So you're not gonna, you're not gonna try to change this, okay? You're not gonna do a single thing to change these daggers. The only thing you can change is the lightness of being, okay? So that's what I want you to think about and have that visualization in your head when you're thinking about these dynamics here, okay? So, um, so yeah. Now, if you have watched this far into this live stream, I think we're like 14 minutes in. That's crazy. Um, if you've watched this live stream, if you've seen more than one or two of my live streams, that means that you are meant to embrace your lightness of being and, and be that person, okay? Be that person who brings light and love into the family court system. It is possible. We need coaches, healers, light workers, go-getters, hustlers, um, thought leaders. We need those people working in the court system and you are in a 
um, you are you have an opportunity to to do that because you're in the court system. You wouldn't be watching this if you weren't. Now, if you don't like me, I mean, I had I got a couple. I get hate messages. You know, people are like, well, why are you so freaking? You know, um, why are you so positive and blah blah blah? Have you do you know what I've been through? You know, so they're not ready yet. They're not ready to embrace that next stage. Okay, they're still kind of like in that early trauma phase, which is a progression. It's, it's a normal progression. So if you're watching this and you're like, oh my God, I hate you, Monica. Like you're, you're awful. Then that's fine to like, just close it, close this out and like come back and see one of my videos in like six months. You know, maybe you'll be ready then. That's totally fine. So it really depends on where you're at. But if you are watching this, you are supposed to be a light worker in the family court system. Okay. I'm, I'm calling you out on, on this. Cause if you're watching this, that means that you you're supposed to do it, okay? So um, when you, <laughs> so hang on one second. My window keeps wanting to shrink. So um, yeah, so if you're watching this, um, you are meant to be here, okay? And you um, you probably are like, wow, that looks really awesome, but I don't know how to, I don't know how to progress further with this. So just, that's fine, keep watching my videos and I'm gonna put a link um, in the comment, you know, in the description where you could get a free copy of my book. Okay. You could like download it right there on the spot. You could, you could literally have my book in like two seconds. So, um, I'm going to do that. See so if you want to like go deeper with this. Okay. So, um, yeah, you just need directions. Like you need like an instructions sheet, like do this, do this, do this. And then you can, you can do that because you have it in you. You're, you're, you already have the lightness of being that is, that's wanting to come out. All right. So, um, so because you're embracing, um, this lightness of being, you have to, um, you have a special gift that you can emanate from your, your heart space, your soul, and you can turn, you can turn all that hatred that's coming at you and you could just neutralize it. It will just turn into dust and disappear. Okay. Not, you're not going to stop it. You're just going to like neutralize it. Okay. So, um, also this is interesting when you do neutralize the hate, you are sending a gift back to your abuser. You're actually sending them a gift. Isn't that so nice? You are, uh, you're sending love to them, okay? Now, I don't mean love in a traditional romantic sense where you're back into your enmeshment and your, um, your, your malleable behavior and you're allowing them to abuse you. I don't mean like that. I, don't, I definitely don't mean like the enabling sort of love. I don't mean romantic love. People who have a lightness of being have love and they just emanate love everywhere they go even if they're in a bad place like they're about around bad people you're still going to have that like energy coming out of you so you're you're sending love back to your abuser your abusers because there's more than one and um you're sending your radiance out there and that will dissolve the nastiness and it will heal them now i don't think these people can be healed in this lifetime but you're you're gonna like heal their you're gonna you're going you're going to heal part of their karma, okay? And then like, you know, if you believe in past lives and stuff, when they if they embody another, if they if they embody another body, <laughs> then you know they would not necessarily have the same narcissistic energy that um, that they have in this lifetime. So you're not gonna change them in this lifetime, trust me. You know, so. Um, so yeah, so what else? Let me make sure I have everything. So by doing this, the last message, by doing this, you are drawing your line in the sand. You're saying, you're like creating like a mantra. You're saying, I, I am a, I have a lightness of being and this energy is not allowed, not allowed to come in. You have this nice bubble. You can see through the bubble. You, you can still welcome people in and out. You know, that's fine. You're not setting up a wall. It's a bubble. Um, and, your, and your mantra is this energy is not allowed to come in. Like this is freaking sacred space. You're not, you're not coming here. You could go there and do your thing, but you're not coming in. You're not coming here. Okay. I'm not going to get sick because of what you're doing, you know? Um, and you're, you're drawing your line in the sand that there is another way to take this on. Okay. And there's, there's another way to take on this horrible, horrible system and this horrible energy. And even if you can't like write really sophisticated motions and you don't have the, the, the courage to stand up in court and speak your rights and, um, 
all that, you can you can start with the energy that you embody and what you're going to accept um, into your into your bubble, into your personal space, if you will. So, um, and you're 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 sending a message to the universe that there is another way to take this on without the codependency and the attachment and without being aggressive, okay? Um, without getting angry back. Because when you're, if someone's like hurting you and you get aggressive, you're, you're hurting yourself because it's very tiring and, and toxic to be aggressive. So you're, you're kind of just messing that whole energy up even more. <laughs> you're like compounding the problem. So um, you're, and you're also sending the universe by, by embodying this third way of being, you're sending the, you're, you're telling the universe, um, this is who I am. Okay. And this is part of your legacy. You're going to always be this way. You're going to be this way when you're 85 years old or 110, because you don't just, you don't just embody a likeness of being and then like ditch it a month later when you, you know, <laughs> When your tax bill comes in or something like that you know it doesn't work that way you ha you either have or you don't okay it, it doesn't go you know trans transformation is a one-way valve it doesn't go backwards okay you might relapse but you're always going to pick yourself back up and keep going so um so you deserve you deserve expansiveness with your relationship with your ex um you deserve to, to grow you deserve to take what's what your ex is doing and turn it into a growing experience. And then you're creating a new relationship with your ex because you're always going to have a relationship with your ex, no matter what. Okay. Whether you're married, divorced, whether he's dead, you're dead. You're always going to have a relationship. Okay. You don't just like not have a relationship. And so you get to just, you get to decide how that relationship pans out. Now, so do they, they get to decide too. They get to say, well, I'm going to abuse her for the rest of my life that they could do that. They, they have the right to, think and want to do whatever they want you're just not going to allow that what they do in they could throw the daggers the daggers are just going to like disappear <laughs> before they get to you and that's going to suck for them because um you know they're just going to be wasting their time so but that's fine if that's what they choose to do that's fine too so they also get a say in this relationship but you certainly get a say and the court does not get a say and um definitely i don't think my book covers that um I really don't believe my book covers like how to like draw a boundary with the court and tell the court, like you can't tell me how to run my relationships, but um, you can certainly like private message me or um, if you want to go down the legal route and find out what your legal rights are to, to, you know, set boundaries with the court and say, you can't, you can't spell out the kind of relationship I'm allowed to have with my ex. So there's a legal way to do that too. And you want to contact Ron and Sherry Palmer with fixfamilycourts.com um go ahead and private message me if you need more information on that and but you get to you get to determine the the terms of your relationship with your ex not the government nobody else okay um this is your relationship this is your life you are the expert in your own life you are the expert in your relationships so um i'm going to be putting a link to my book let me see what we have for comments Da, 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 da. I think someone came on. I think it was Patricia that came on. Oh yeah, it is Patricia. <clears throat> Thank you, Patricia, for watching. Yeah, and Patricia says, draw, drawing, I can't say that word, drawing, drawing a line in the sand <laughs> to role model positive adult relationship behavior for your children as childhood is fleeting, you're on point creating a better relationship. Yeah, and so this is the thing, and I, I was gonna say this in another live stream, but I'll just throw it in now, because it's fitting right now. Um, when, when you choose this, because it is scary, it's scary to draw boundaries. You're gonna be like, oh my God, what's the court gonna say if the court finds out I'm not texting him back, or if I'm not using our family wizard, like I'm gonna get a spanking from the court if I don't, function in this relationship the way the government wants me to um that's really scary because now you're going to be like up shit's creek with the court right um and that's scary because they're like oh well how do i respond to this like here i am being all like woo and then i'm going to get in trouble they're going to file a motion for contempt against me so it is scary because you might be facing that crap right um but if you continue to hold your values in place you know use your value system and your mantra that i spoke about if you use that as your backbone um you are role modeling for your children because who's watching 
who's watching all this? Your children. When you're long and dead, your kids can go and dig up transcripts. I mean, I, I always say, like, I hope I don't, like, die tomorrow because my kids would learn everything about my case because they would have to go through all my papers. Your kids will see which path you chose. So forget about the consequences. Forget about if you, like, get sanctioned or whatever, if you lose time with your children because you spoke up in court. If you, your kids will pay attention to who you're being in this and not like what happened. They're not going to be like, oh, my God, look what happened to my mom. They're going to be like, wow, look how my mom was acting and look how my mom was being and look what she was representing. So that's, so that's, you know, if you choose, you might choose to just do whatever the court wants because you're afraid of the punishments or you can choose to do, to do you. <laughs> um, your kids will see the person that you became either way and, and they're the ones watching. So. Um, that's what I have to say. That's my long response to your to your comment. So that's going to be a whole nother live stream. I have that one lined up. It's, I'm probably going to do that one later this week. So um, thank you so much for watching. Um, I'm going to put a, a link to my book in the comments. Um, I'll show you a copy of my book. Um, unfortunately, you won't get this pretty little paperback, but it's you're going to get the digital copy. So even easier, right? You have no book to lug around. So um, okay. Um, I really look forward to hearing from you. Go ahead and leave comments if you want. Send me private messages if you have any questions, and we will talk soon. Bye-bye.